Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode number 51. I am Bita Nazim Kelly. I'm here with Bita Arabian. Hi, Bita June. Hi. Hello. How are you? Great. Thank you. I am excited and really interested to talk about a Persian holiday called Mehrigan, which I, to be honest, didn't know a ton about before, but it's just such an intriguing and beautiful holiday that I wanted to learn more about it and also share it with our listeners in case anyone wants to participate in this holiday, which is also referred to as the Persian Festival of Autumn, like a time of harvest and giving thanks to nature and sharing love with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know much about Mehrigan, Bita Jun? No, I don't know a lot about it. We didn't celebrate it growing up. In fact, I went to my resource, my mom. It's her birthday week, so I'm seeing lots of her this week. I asked her, and actually, she didn't know a bunch about it either. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things. I think it comes from old Persia. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you were educated in Iran, like my parents were, you learned about it in school, but you didn't necessarily practice it. It's an old Zoroastrian tradition. It sounds really beautiful. And like you, I am excited and super interested. I love the main tenets of the Zoroastrian culture. Good words, good deeds, good thoughts. How can you not embrace that? It's it's so beautiful. And I have been kind of opening my eyes to this tradition and welcoming it. I'd love to try some of the things. Yeah. So yeah, autumn. It's a beautiful season. Yeah, it is. And it comes at a time where of harvest. Everything has grown and has ripened. It is now ready to share with your family and with your friends and to be enjoyed. And what it seems like is for Mehrigan is really showering each other and showing each other kindness, friendship and love to each other and to nature. So I think the tenet is that what you give to nature and give love to nature, nature will give it back to you and people living in harmony will make the world a better place. So it's actually super beautiful and I love it. And one of the really interesting things about Mehrigan, to your point that if you didn't grow up Zoroastrian, you may not have celebrated it. But one of the most beautiful things I love about Mehrigan, aside from these really culturally strong tenants, is that it has a sofre. It has a sofre like how we have like for no ruse. We've talked about the sofre half scene that welcomes the spring equinox or where we celebrate no ruse the first day of the Persian New Year. And also there's a sofre for the sofre art when people get married and they have a place setting where there's certain elements on there that symbolize aspects of their future that they want to obtain health, prosperity, fertility, everything kind of has a meaning that's put on the sofre half scene and the sofre art. But I love how the Mehrigan has a sofre too. And similar to the other ones, it has a mirror and it has candles and it's a beautiful fabric that it's set upon. I read that the sofre for Mehrigan is a beautiful violet color. And, you know, being in the fall season, all the colors are warm. Mm hmm. Those are actually my personal favorite colors, kind of like sunset colors and fall colors. And the sofre traditionally is purple or violet in color, which just looks so warm and beautiful. What are some things that are set on the symbolic table setting or sofre for Mehragan? Yeah, so, you know, the mirror, the candles, there's usually fruit to symbolize that the abundance of what nature has given, typically in the form of pomegranate, grapes, or apples. So those are bountiful on the table. Also, espand. And we see the espand on the other tables as well, as we had mentioned. And espand is the wild rue that's burned to bring positive energy and to burn off any negative energy or chishmabad. So that's definitely there, which smells beautiful. 
Cheshma bad meaning warding off evil spirits. Yeah, exactly. There's usually like a holy book. There's a Rastrian book is called the Avesta. There's usually that or another holy book. A lot of times there's the Shahnameh, which is that Persian epic of kings. It's a beautiful book. I have a really great copy that has stunning illustrations in it. So they would have that as well. Along with like sweets, rose water cookies, different sweets to be enjoyed at that time and to drink. I think I mentioned the Sharbat, so a little drink mixed with juice and water and sometimes basil seeds in there to toch mesharbati. And what it is is that you get together and then at noon, usually, typically, I think this year in the States, they celebrate it on October 2nd. And traditionally, you get together with your loved ones and gather around the sofre and maybe say a prayer and then drink the sharbat together and give love to each other. And sometimes I read that you can toss wild marjoram or lotus and sugar plum seeds up in the air on top of the people who are embracing each other. So it really is like showering with love and starting the new season with that intention. Yeah, there's a lot of sort of crossover similarities with American Thanksgiving. Like you said, that's a time in the olden days that the farmers were harvesting and a time of abundance. Mm -hmm. I love this time of year. When I go for walks and dog walks and so on, honestly, the way the sun hits is different. And it just gives like a glow. And I've always noticed it in this time of year. Mm -hmm. It's just like a really special warm glow. And that's the feeling I get about learning about this holiday. It just kind of warms my heart. Yeah, absolutely. It's also thought of that the sun was actually formed on Mehrigan. So sometimes you'll see representation of sunflowers on the Sofre Mehrigan. The victory of light over darkness is referred to good over bad. So bringing light, bringing love, bringing abundance into the season is what we're talking about. Yeah, and I have felt and read about gratitude being part of the abundance of the harvest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, giving thanks to nature. Yeah, so thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate everyone listening. And we just wanted to have you join us in our journey as we learned about Mehrigan. So we hope that you can walk away learning a little bit more about this beautiful ancient tradition that we're going to try to incorporate into our lives. I know I'm super excited to lay out a Sofre Mehrigan this year, a beautiful purple fabric or a beautiful terme, an old embroidered fabric that is special and to put that out with a mirror and candles and have this another one of the occasions that we celebrate and if you're a listener of the show you know that we love to embrace any kind of happiness and events and have a reason to celebrate so adding this to the list of fun things to do and appreciate and giving thanks to each other and love to each other and really enjoying all that yeah when i'm picking the apples from our tree i'm going to think about our ancestors and when i'm having my little trail mix with the persian nuts and Mm -hmm. i'm going to also give gratitude and thanks and be grateful for this tradition that i'm also going to try to carry out yay awesome great all right well we do have an ask the beats if you're up for it bita june I'm always up for an Ask the Beat. What's our question today? This question comes from Caroline in Pittsburgh, and she asks, what is your favorite Persian sweet? Mm. So kind of fun question here. Mm -hmm. Definitely love Persian sweets. I know you do too. They are so delicious and unique. So many to choose from. What would you pick as your favorite? You know, I'd have to choose one of the cookies. Persian cookies are super small, bite-sized, easy to pop, and really unique and delicious. I love rice flour cookies and chickpea cookies, nana berenji and mm. nohochi. Those yeah. little cute clover cookies and the round rice flour cookies with the seeds on top mm-hmm. or poppy seeds. Poppy seeds, yeah. I sometimes just put chia seeds. Oh, good idea. I eat them plain. I enjoy them with tea. And Persian cookies are so uniquely delicious. What do you like? So actually, I was going to say Persian cookie too. I will stick to my original answer and maybe I'll touch on a few other favorites. My favorite Persian sweet is actually the walnut cookie, the nunger dui. Aha. Which one? There's a couple forms. Yeah. So the one that I like is not the tiny, tiny one. The one that I like is like about like two inches round and it's actually really soft. So it has like a little like crunchy exterior. It's a flat cookie. It's like a little domed. 
and it has like a little bit of a crunch on the outside and then inside is this like moist and gushy and I love it and it is so delicious and so oh, soft. Oh, yum. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I have like these distant memories. I only went back to Iran once as a child pre-revolution, but I have these memories of those cookies. Do they come in like individually wrapped tin foil sometimes to keep them moist? I could see that. The ones that I'm thinking about, I've just seen actually mostly in like Persian bakeries out here, like in San Jose or kind of like in the Bay Area. I've seen them and in LA, Mm. but I'm sure they have different versions. But I would say that my favorite Persian sweet is the walnut cookie, Noon Gerdui. Delicious. I would say if I had to pick a runner up so that we're not just talking about Persian cookies, I would say... Zulbia. Oh, super sweet. Kind of like a fried saffron dough. If you think of like funnel cake, it has that type of appearance, but much smaller and very delicate. And that is like super delicious. You can get them in some Persian restaurants or you can get them at specialty markets. But that is like a really fun and different Persian sweet too. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the question, Caroline. Hope you can get your hands on some. And I know that there's a lot of Persian online retailers that sell some of these Persian sweets. So hopefully you can find some to get delivered to you in Pittsburgh. Okay, Pitajun, thank you so much for a great little episode. I'm excited to celebrate Mehrgan and I can't wait to see if you do a sofra too. Likewise, it was a pleasure. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Until next time, bye. Bye Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.